Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am so excited to be with you here on this beautiful Saturday morning. Welcome. We are going to have lots of fun today on a topic that uh, has affected millions of people in the United States alone and an estimated billions of people all over the world. So I believe this is a, a very important topic. So thank you for joining me today. And just once again, thank you to all of you guys that consistently comment and share and do everything because uh, the topic today actually came from most of you guys' requests. Now, what we're going to do a little bit differently today at the end, because we have multiple people in the studio today, I'm going to take a couple questions after because we're going to be covering a very important topic, but there's some things that I'm going to allow just for a little bit of questions after that way. Plus, we have some surprise for you at the end of our show today. It's going to be kind of exciting. So let's get to something that impacts majority women out there and something that they want, but on top of it, it affects both men and women just differently. And what we're talking about today is actually how to have absolutely healthy skin but also a condition of acne. Um, as we know, we all want to have beautiful, shiny skin. And last week, as I showed you, uh, there were certain things that I teach women, especially, and men. It's just that men don't uh, take as, you know, care, as much care as their skin. But really what happens, women really uh, focus on this, which they should. And I'm going to show you why uh, women actually have more skin issues than actually guys. And I will tell you this, to give you a little prelude to it, it, it is because by nature they have more hormones, okay? But it's not because they have hormones. Because they try to, they try to show women that they have skin issues because hormones. And well, that's not really true. It's just that the majority of women affected by acne and skin problems are women. And hormone is a contributing factor, uh, but it's not really, okay? So I, I'm, I'm setting you up for a good understanding of what it is and what we're going to do. But, you know, I've, I've seen, uh, uh, I've dealt with, you know, young ladies that were, were at a point where they wanted to be homeschooled because their acne was so bad that they never wanted to leave the house. I can honestly tell you, there was a situation where my heart broke young in practice that a 16-year-old girl from Upper Michigan, um, her, she actually begged her mom to drive her down here because the acne was so bad, the cystic acne was so bad that she actually lost all of her friends. So I can honestly tell you, and then when we lost our friends, not because they, people didn't like her, it's because she became you know, so secluded because she was embarrassed for people to look at her skin. Now, she was a beautiful and now is a gorgeous, yeah, actually, woman now in her 30s because this happened early in practice. But also, I personally had to live with this myself. Not only did I suffer some from skin issues, and people say, well, doc, look at your skin now. That's the good point. You can actually recover from these things, even if there's some scarring. But my beautiful wife, she actually dealt with cystic acne and other acne problems from the day I met her. You know, that was the thing. If I want to reiterate some of the four major conditions that my wife suffered from when I first met her, endometriosis by far one of the biggest things, cystic acne, you know, uh, ulcerative colitis, and cluster headaches, okay? They were there on a consistent basis. But when I met her, she had a lot of acne. And on top of it, she had, had wore a lot of makeup to cover it up. Some of you guys watching this experience this every day. But what if, what if I could actually walk you through my thinking, a different perspective on this? I believe I have a very different perspective on this. And the key thing why I'm gonna speak of this today, because if you listen to this, you never have to sometimes search on a doctor for this because if you know how to take care of your skin and what to do with it, you can make great changes. And I say, doc, but wait, I'm not a doc. No, but remember, a different perspective and what I believe that I'm going to continue to do with you guys is share to you my journey of what goes on on every condition that I've dealt with and I've always approached it from a different perspective. I'm gonna share with you always my light bulb moments of when I started to go through things as a young practitioner and how I started to figure things out because I can tell you right now, I actually, this is gonna sound uh, extremely weird. With the exception of just understanding some good anatomy and biochemistry and uh, things through college, I can honestly tell you, my clinical training and all of it and, and I can even say this for, for medical training aside, I didn't really learn that much. I really didn't. Now, why am I sharing that with you? 
I'm sharing with you because when I got into practice, I had a very different viewpoint on things and I started to really work those ideas out. Well, that's why I can stand in front of you now, 20 years later, offices all over the world going, hey, it's a really different thinking. So that's why I want to share it with you. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually get the clinical results. So let's start, okay? Let's start right here. So acne, I mean, it's very devastating, but what is it? Now, I'm going to share with you that when I was young in practice, um, the amount of information you find on the internet <laughs> was very little. So when I was searching these things out, I had to a lot of times go to books and things like that. Yes, back then, you know, there was, you know, Yahoo and things like that that existed to be able to search things that way. But now the greatest thing is if you are going through anything, you can literally jump on the internet and actually research things quite well. Well, I'm going to show you just like I have in a lot of videos that if you do search out things and don't really come from a perspective, it can be very confusing. So let's walk through it because I'll tell you right now, I pulled up the major sources. Now, what do I mean by major sources? The top searches for all conditions, will, they will list themselves out, but I'm going to go through things that you know of on a regular basis. So I started to pull the most known medical establishment in the world. And who is it? So let's see how they define acne. So let's see what Mayo Clinic says, all right? Now everybody, most everybody I've ever talked to, including Amish, understand what Mayo Clinic is. They are the largest medical uh, hospital and establishment in the world. They're known as the best diagnostic place, which just means they can find a condition probably better than anybody in the world. And I don't disagree with that. I think they're absolutely wonderful at that. So let's see how they define acne. Acne is a skin condition that occurs when the hair follicles become plugged with oil, okay? That's kind of a universal idea that they talk about, is where the hair follicle gets plugged with oil, all right? And dead skin cells. All right, so we got some plugging of some, some uh, uh, you know, hair follicles and some dead skin cells. It often uh, causes whiteheads, blackheads, pimples, and usually appears on the face, forehead, chest, back, shoulders. Acne is most uh, common among teenagers, although it affects people of all ages, all right? Effective treatments are available. Okay, but acne can be persistent. So what they're saying is, even though that they have forms of treatment for it that way, it doesn't seem to resolve. And they actually have multiple forms of it, all right? The pimples and bumps heal slowly, and when one, one goes away, others seem to pop up, all right? Okay, I agree. I, I really don't see, you know, uh, anything wrong with that, if, especially if you look at what happens and what you see on the skin that way. But it didn't really give us, like, Okay, what is it? Where is it coming from? What is causing these problems? So let's look at the American Academy of Dermatology. All right, very big organization. Let's see what they say about it. Okay, and as you know, overview symptoms, causes, treatments, tips. Let's kind of go through just an overview. Acne is the most common skin condition in the United States. Actually, that is very true. But let me tell you this. You've heard me say this a ton of times. Please don't confuse common with normal. It's not normal to have acne. Let me say that again. It's not normal to have acne, all right? So now, although it's common, accurate information about acne can be scarce. That I really agree about, all right? Because the reason why it is scarce in our current level of medical thinking is because their thinking is totally wrong about it. So I'm gonna show you. Now, this makes it difficult to get clearer skin, okay? I do want you to, to, to pause for a second. Now, this is a very well-known um, organization and I want to just go back to those two senses and understand where I'm coming from on this. Although it is common, accurate information about acne can be scarce. This makes it difficult to get clearer skin. What they are basically saying is, we have no idea what's going, going on, so therefore, we don't really know how to get this normal. I mean, think about that. And that should put the doubt in the fact that $2 billion just in la last year were spent just on acne treatments. So I want you to think that you're going to professionals that actually are just led to actually give people stuff and have no clue or no concept or no investigation where this stuff is coming from. And it's led to a lot of health problems, and you'll see that shortly. Um, this information on the site can help you understand acne and how to successfully treat it. All right. We're still in that same paragraph, and it goes, information is scarce, we don't know what to do, but then the next sentence, the information on this site can help you understand acne and how to successfully treat it. I mean, 
It's, I, <laughs> I know people in the studio are laughing, but this is, this is what's out there. You just said this. You just looked at what it was. There's, there's really no definitive information about it, but they're going to tell you how successful you can be at treating it that way. But really, two sentences before, you know, information about being scarce, difficult to have clear skins, but then there's success with it. Okay, why treat acne? The major reason why they tell you to treat acne right there is because of emotional issues. And I actually can agree with that. Like I said, I've seen this in women greatly, and I've seen it in young men too. That cosmetic aspect is a very driving factor of why people do things, all right? Now, they go through some other stuff that way, but like I said, let's, do, let's go on a little bit farther here, okay? As the Academy does this, let's look at, once again, how it's, some of the statistics about how it's defined. The mo it's the most common skin condition. It costs about two billion per year of treatments. It affects 50 million people annually here in the United States, 50 million. That's a lot of people, all right? Now, roughly 85%, this was a, a crazy stat, of people experience acne by the time they are the age of 24. By the age of 24. Wow, if you think about it this way, that's a huge amount of number, okay? That's in the hundreds of millions, and these stats are just from the United States, okay? I can imagine what they are worldwide when you look at some of the things that actually are caused by it, all right? Now, what does it show us? Let's go back to the treatments. So I want to see what they're saying is the form of treatment if you are looking for and actually suffering from acne. Now, um, here's a cool thing is this. How do dermatologists diagnose acne, okay? Once again, they examine the skin, okay? How do dermatologists treat acne? Today, there are many, okay? Many effective acne treatments. This does not mean that every acne treatment works. I'm just reading what they say, for everyone who has acne, but it does mean that virtually every case of acne can be controlled. All right, let's get back to that thinking. I've always taught you guys that medicine is the fire department. They're constantly managing fires, but they never ask how the fire was created and what we need to do to rebuild the process. That's why I've always said, I've said, listen, um, dermatologists really drive me nuts because they're in constant treatment of an outside issue, all right? And so therefore, guess what? They even listed, there's really nothing that we can do, we can just try to control it, all right? Now, so let's go back. I said, well, well maybe this academy, let's go back and see what Mayo Clinic you know, talks about treatments and stuff that would on. Maybe they have a different perspective or a better perspective here. So let's go over here. Um, they talk about treatment once again. They go right to prescription. Okay, over the counter and, and actually prescriptions. Now, acne medications work by reducing oil production, speeding up skin turnover, fighting bacterial infections, and reducing inflammation, which helps prevent scarring. So what they're really doing is they're managing things within the skin, and that's why there's so many different forms of treatment for it that way, because why? Oil production, uh, speed up skin uh, cell turnover, uh, fighting bacteria, infections, and reducing inflammation. Okay, so, all right, so where's the factors coming from? Well, they don't really talk about it. They don't really talk about it all. So I said, okay, what's their form of treatments? Now, the number one treatment by far that dominates all of acne treatment is actually uh, uh, um, a drug called retinoids, all right? Accutane. Accutane is a, is a very common medication still used today, even though there is some things about you're going to learn that are, are quite scary. Uh, what else do they do? Antibiotics, just talked about going after infections. Sicilic acid, what does that do? Once again, it's actually meant to actually try to keep an antimicrobial effect because antibiotics, one time, once again, sometimes don't affect it because different bacteria, could be yeast, could be, uh, could be just a simple uh, bacteria, so they gotta go through different treatments of actually trying to do with that that way. So once again, we have bacteria on and in all of our body, okay? Why don't we have acne on every aspect of our body? Now, Drum, I've seen acne from head to toe. It's devastating. But we still are actually just in a state of understanding and management that the majority of actually medications are retinoids. Now, what is that, all right? Well, retinoids is actually a synthetic form of vitamin A. Now, what they found out was this. They found out doing all medical research that low-dose vitamin A tablets, and this is actually a medication, actually 
made acne, actually reduce at a high level and sometimes deplete, and they could keep most of it away if they were still taking the medication. And what they found out was once they stopped the medication, it started to come back. All right, now what, now what kind of drug are we talking about? Well, we're talking about Accutane. Now it's funny because Accutane came out in 1982, but it was actually discovered in, in actually the 60s by a Switzerland-based uh, um, um, drug company that way. And they're actually trying to produce a medication that reduced skin cancers. Let me say that again. It's kind of like this. Does anybody know how Viagra is created? Viagra is created, they were searching for a blood pressure medication. They were trying to actually lower the blood pressure, and they didn't, but they found something else came up during the process. And that's actually how uh, Viagra was actually created. Um, Accutane wasn't going for a, a, a acne medication. They were actually going for a cancer treatment medication. I want you to think about that. They're actually trying to slow the growth of actually cells. And they found out it really didn't have an effect much on skin cancer, but they did see an effect on other skin issues like acne. All right? Now, what happens was you say, well, Doc, wait, hold the phone. Acne drug, Accutane, no longer sold. Well, actually, it is sold. It's sold every day. It's just sold under a generic name. See, that's what they talk about, is they've actually just changed it when it came out in 1982, and they've had so many negative effects from it. I will not call it side effects because it's not a side effect, it's a direct effect, okay? That's why if you go on drugs.com and rx.com, they talk about Accutane. And as you can see, I want you to see Rx list. You can go to any of the drug manufacturers. Causes birth defects. They actually go over, and if you scroll down a little bit more, they talk about the contraindications, okay, of the major birth defects, what it does. Now, I was like going, well, what are, why, how is it going to cause birth? How does a skin medication cause birth defects? Well, what does it do? Okay, because it's a synthetic form of vitamin A, vitamin A actually is used in all parts of the body, okay, not just skin replication. It's used to actually control and, and uh, um, actually control the growth of a lot of cells, including all epithelial cells. But epithelial cells exist all through the body. That's why they can notice abnormalities of the face, ears, eyes, skull, central nervous system, cardiovascular system, thymus, parathyroid gland. And they talk about all the massive abnormalities. It's like, do not get pregnant. Now, in foreign countries, Accutane is still sold. And get this, do you know what they're, they actually have to give a consent form? Okay, don't do the United States because people would actually have to think then, okay? Just like they, they don't do it here, but in other countries they do. They have to give a consent form for them to even take the drug, and they have to consent that they're going to um, go through abstinence during the time of taking Accutane. It's not a joke. One of their biggest things that doctors in foreign countries actually ask people to do during Accutane treatments is actually abstinence. That blew my freaking mind away. The reason why they actually are asking to be abstained from sex during the time is because if you are taking this and you get pregnant and that development of that baby actually is going to be decreased and there's going to be massive birth defects. So I'm sitting there going, all right, so what the heck is going on? What is it doing? So I sat there as a young man, as a young practitioner going, all right, what? Okay. I had, I, once again, I'm like, this is the former treatment, 1982, busted out. $2 billion recently, $700 million every single year, and the consistency of it's going on that way, I'm going, and, and, and the sad part is, is all these things and all the known effects that way, and they still allow it? Well, yeah. Why do they allow it? They allow it because there's a high demand. They do. But then all of a sudden, I was sitting there going, well, here came my light bulb moment with acne. I was sitting there going, well, let me ask you a question. They're using synthetic form of vitamin A to control acne. And I know this is funny, and I know this seems simple, but here was my light bulb moment. Let's give skin, the skin vitamin A. <laughs> no, I'm going, that's, I mean, uh, I was like going, they're doing synthetic vitamin A. They're getting clinical results with it that way. They were, okay, that's why it was so well sold, and they could show you pre and post. You can look about it that way, and that's how they promote it. See, they promote the aspect of changing the body 
and actually getting clinical results. Obviously, once again, when they stopped Accutane, the acne came back. And then that's why they say there's not really no, any known cause. But wait, if you actually give a synthetic vitamin A, you know, why didn't you ask the question of maybe they're deficient in vitamin A, and maybe if we give them and get to their sources of vitamin A, maybe they won't have skin acne. Okay, now I know it's simple, but that was the start of my own skin journey, my wife's skin journey, and thousands and thousands of patients all over the world now. Because if Accutane worked with you, and most of it does, I'm gonna show you how the deficiency in vitamin A not only led to acne, but it led to actually infections and other things that come about that way once you understand what vitamin A does in the skin and actually does all the way through the body. So, I wanna show you the skin itself, okay? This is just a nice little chunk of skin that way. Now, it's kinda of cool. I always say the skin has multiple layers. Now, it's defined as three, but some of those three layers have multiple layers itself, all right? So let's just walk through it so you can understand it. See, when you start learning how the body works and what it does, then the stuff that they're doing makes no sense. And then when I bring it around to you about how to take care of it, it makes complete sense. And then you can see your condition resolve. So let's look at this. I know it's a little hard to see a little bit, but once again, three layers, epidermis, dermis, and the subcutaneous tissue, all right? And it's also called the hypodermis. So if you want to remember three things, epidermis, the above, the dermis, the middle, hypodermis, that's lower, all right? Now, as you can see, there's a hair follicle. There's, I want you to remember this, sebaceous gland. I usually don't try to get too technical with you, but I need you to understand sebaceous glands make the oils for the follicles, all right? Let's say that again. The sebaceous gland makes the sebum, the oily substance that actually, once again, they talk about the oil getting stuck, the oil being, not being released that way, and therefore, guess what? It's made by the sebaceous gland. Now, one thing cool I want you guys to know the difference between men and women and why men and women's skin are so different, it's because of this bottom layer, the hypodermis, the lowest layer. Because you know what the majority of that layer is, ladies? It's called adipose tissue, fat tissue, all right? That's why, ladies, you will always have a smooth, silky look to your skin. Why? Because you have that smooth adipose tissue that layers it and it gives you that nice content to your skin. Guys, we don't really have that. That's why guys' skin and women's skin will always look dramatically different, and you have that. Now, that's important, and this is not the topic today, but that's important for endocrine hormone production but also why women, for example, don't look as ripped as men. They can't. They have an extra layer of tissue that belongs there. It's part of the whole skin process that way. And you need it. You do need it, okay? Now, a couple things that go on with that, okay? So what I want you to do is this. I want you to look at it. So I started to go, well then, what effect does vitamin A have all on these layers and on the glands? Well, I started to research it, all right? Started research it a long time ago. Skin ex itself actually is known as, as a major retinoid vitamin A responsive tissue. I was like, hold the phone. It responds. Let me say it again. It responds genetically to vitamin A. So when people try to tell you that age and genes uh, have an effect, it's why you have the condition. No, it doesn't. Not at all. What happens is this your genes respond to the environment of how much vitamin A you have. And if you have proper vitamin A, your gene will respond perfectly. So when they tell you that it's family history of why you have skin conditions, well, maybe it's family history that your, 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 your diet and other things never consisted of vitamin A and you become very deficient. That is more of a family history than actually a gene process. Your genes will respond beautifully to vitamin A. Now, it supports the cell growth and differentiation. That's great. It normalizes keratinization. Now, once again, had to bring out a little skin process for you to understand, but let's define it. I'll always define it for you so it makes sense. Okay, so it, it, once again, it supports and controls the, the cell growth. It's why, if you look at Accutane, was tried to use in the form of doing what? Skin cancers, because what's a cancer? An accelerated growth of, of, of cells. All right, well, if they could create a medication that could actually inhibit that growth, 
Guess what they did? Well, they couldn't slow it down enough where it couldn't prevent uh, cancers. That's why it was never used for that. But it's still known as a cancer medication. Now, but let's define keratinization. What is it, all right? I love this because understanding this, this is how your skin grows every day. It, the process in which the cytoplasm of the outermost cells of the mammalian epidermis, so the upper layer, is replaced by keratin. Keratinization occurs of the upper, upper layer of the epidermis in the feathers, hair, claws, nails, hooves, and, and horns. Every mammal has this layer. Every ma mammal goes through this. So imagine, the skin cells that you woke up with this morning, guess what they do? They grow through keratinization with the protein keratin. They grow and they push and they slough off. It's a part of the layer that really protects you from the outside. This is just the growth of it. And vitamin A controls it. Vitamin A controls it. It controls that differentiation. It controls that growth process. So therefore, it's one of the major regulators of how your actually skin grows. So let's go back. In other words, it is important to the normal shedding of your skin cells that line the walls of the hair follicle. Oh, let's say that again. It's, it's an important and normal shedding of the skin cells that line the walls of the hair follicle. Remember they talk about that the cells of the hair follicle get backed up. That's why some of you guys over recently have been talking to me about the keratinosis and the other conditions that where you actually block that hair follicle and you end up seeing those red bumps. Well, once again, the thing that controls that keratinosis is what? Vitamin A. And if you're deficient, you're gonna actually have a block of those hair follicles. Where acne arises from, skin cells are born in the epidermis and the deepest layers of the skin. Maturation of the skin cells occur and they migrate up. They up. Since retinol, vitamin A, controls the turnover of the epidermis cells, have enough of this vitamin is important for those to make sure that they turn over. If you do not have enough vitamin A, you will have all forms of keratinosis. So all of you guys that ask me about keratinosis-based conditions, one of the major causal factors is a deficiency. It's not a genetic process. It's not a family history process. It's not actually really even an inflammatory process. It's a deficiency. And the body has to try to adapt. And it's like this. If you don't have any fuel for your car, you could have a 2019 car. It doesn't run. That's the one thing I was going, oh my goodness. So as you start to actually increase their vitamin A, consumption, I started to notice that keratinosis conditions started to resolve. And they were like, Doc, this is a miracle. I've been suffering this my whole life. Well, yeah, you've been suffering this whole life because you've been dealing with a doctor that's trying to manage the response that's going on in your body from a deficiency. Let me say that again. You are going to doctors that thought I need to manage a skin. That's what my education told me to do. Here's the medications and here's my degrees that now allow me to treat your skin and prescribe you something and manage it. But as simple as actually getting a person to start to actually increase their vitamin A levels, not from a toxic substance from the outside, but actually internally, I started to notice these conditions start to resolve greatly. It was beautiful. I was like, and people come back and they were so blown away. I want you to think about this. People are so blown away that if they do the right thing, their body responds. We have actually so programmed people that it's, it's like a miracle. People are like, Doc, you're, you're, a, you're a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker because I gave your body what it needed and it did its job? But think about the, the, how they've conditioned people. So a different perspective is no more to just understand how this stuff works. All right, now let's go on, <laughs> it gets even crazier. And there's, for example, I want to pull a picture out there of the keratinosis hair, there's that sebaceous gland produces all the oil, it starts to plug up there, and guess what happens? You can see those red bumps on the back of your arms, you can see red bumps on your butt, you can see them anywhere, all right? Now, the one thing though, that's a, that, that is a, a sister to acne. I'm gonna keep going on there, all right? So now, let's go a little farther. So, what else does vitamin A do? It reduces the oily, the sebum production. It's really funny, get this. Does anybody know one of the major side effects of Accutane? Dry skin, dry skin. Because they give you such high doses of vitamin A, it reduces 
the sebaceous gland, the sebum, the oil coming out, so everything is dry. So your chance of that whole process getting infected with a bacteria overgrowth has reduced dramatically. Let me give you an example. Let's say a child presents uh, to one of our offices. They say, Doc, they have an ear infection. Well, usually when that happens, they've been to multiple doctors. And I say, well, what did they do? Well, they gave him an antibiotic. Did it work? Yes, it cleared up, but it came back. OK, what did you do again? Gave an antibiotic. Did it clear up? Yep, but it came back. Now they want to stick a tube in his ear. Well, why? Because they have to drain the fluid out. Well, so it wasn't the bacteria that caused the ear infection. The fluid was there. And then the bacteria could actually breathe and build up in fluid because that's what it needs. And therefore, now they want to drain it out because they have no idea how to drain it out besides plugging a very sharp needle through an ear. And that's acceptable? Why don't you just drain the fluid out? Chiropractors don't take care of ear infections. Chiropractors normalize the body so it can normally drain fluid out, and then there's no place for the bacteria to go. When you look at normalizing the oil production of skin from head to toe, guess what happens? Vitamin A is the major factor that controls it. So when a young child comes in with oily skin, now you say, Doc, but why is it that's increased in puberty? Very simple. Everything's accelerated in puberty. Your androgen hormones go up. So the amount of cells and everything you're producing are great. Why do you think your child grows the most at puberty? Why do you think they develop? They get more growth. So of course, if hormones are abnormal and they're accelerated, your body has to actually respond. Well, let's say you're deficient in vitamin A. Now you have puberty that's going crazy and you have no A and of course, there's more demand. How many of you women were told that when you got your cycle that you had to make sure that your fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, K, D, and E elevated? You never heard that. You never heard that because no doctor is going to tell you that because they don't understand this process. You know, so I tell people, you know, I look at my daughters and I'm, and I'm going through it trying to make sure that they're sufficient in their vitamin A to make sure that they have beautiful skin. My beautiful wife, as she started to do that, guess what happened? Her skin started to change dramatically, all right? Now, so reduce sebum production. That's what it does. It controls it. It actually keeps it controlled. Your own vitamin A levels know exactly how your genes respond in order to keep them normal and get normal oily production. So let's see this. Sebum is that oily substance produced by sebaceous glands, which are adjacent to the hair follicle. Acne occurs more easily in individuals who have overactive sebaceous glands. Now, wait, wait, wait. This is where I got you thinking. They're not overactive. They're just not controlled. They're not overactive. Remember, you have a gas in the break. Well, that break is that vitamin A. Well, if you're deficient in vitamin A, it's just going to keep on going. That's not overactive, all right? You're just deficient in break, so you can't actually control it. Now. Um, because the sebum acts like flypaper, where bacteria and yeast can get stuck, see, that's where they live. They can hang out there. But if there's more oil, now it's going to be infected. And you're going to see that pustule come out. Ladies, you just, you, I understand you can play as a doc, all this pus. You know, I got to do everything to reduce my oil. Don't eat greasy, oily foods. That makes no difference. You've heard that. I've heard dermatologists tell people, don't eat chocolate, don't eat greasy foods. Where did they pull this crap out of their butt? Do you understand? I don't get it. It makes no difference. You already produce your own oils. Your sebaceous glands have to. If you didn't, it would be a bad day. You could even get the rest of that bacteria out. Now, the immune cells attempt to solve the problem. There you go. The immune cells attempt to solve the problem. It's responding exactly what it's supposed to do. No, doc. It's red, it's, it's, it's actually cystic, it's horrible, it's painful, it's, there's pus. Yeah, your body doesn't make mistakes. It says, I know exactly what to do. And I'm gonna go to that gland and take care of those buggers that, for example, are becoming overgrown. They're hanging out having a party there because there's too much oil sitting there because there's massive deficiency in vitamin A. Now, but to no avail, the results of inflammation. See. 
the inflammatory response happened because of a deficiency, identified by swelling, redness, heat, and pain. So it makes sense that acne sufferers would want to reduce their sebum production, which vitamin A can help them and accomplish. This is basic. This is really basic. Let's go back to that sebaceous gland right there. Let's go back to all this whole, how many cell production you have, differentiation to each layer from here to here. It moves up, it keratinizes up that way. And it's all based on its vitamin A control, all right? And so that is this. So, so I started to think about it. I said, now look at, here's one thing I'll show you. The epidermis, the highest lever is avascular. That means it gets no blood flow. So it's a good idea to feed your skin from the outside. See, think about it this way. Most people are very vitamin A deficient, and in foreign countries, it's even worse. Even worse, okay? That's why some of the skin diseases you see over there would make you vomit when you actually looked at them. But the idea is this, is when you can actually, this epidermis is avascular, that means, think of this, I'm gonna give you a concept that I think is so simple, but people are like, whoa. Do you understand that your epidermis is actually the farthest thing away from your body? Let me say that again. Your epidermis is the farthest thing away from your body, and it has no blood flow. It has no blood flow, okay? And you say, well, doc, how does it get actually nutrients and vitamin A and everything up there? Well, what it does, there has to be sufficiency of vitamin A in the hypodermis, the dermis, and it diffuses, it leaks up there. But how can it leak if you don't have enough? Heck, the other tissues are going, I'm keeping it, I need it. I don't care about you way up there. It's why skin conditions are so readily today. People want to blame the immune system and hormonal system. One of the major reasons why people have huge skin issues today is because they're so deficient in their fat-soluble vitamins, especially vitamin A. Now. D, K, and E, and all have an effect on it. It's just that today we're talking about the major aspect to your skin and vitamin A, if you can't get vitamin A. So I said, Doc, well, how do we sometimes actually, even if we eat vitamin A and do things, how do we not get enough of it? Well, we're gonna go to Studio Two to show you. All right, we in Studio Two, everybody got me? Fancy Nancy, I got it, Brandon got it? Perfect, all right. Studio Two, you say, Doc, you went right from the skin to this whole bunch of stuff. I wanna thank Ross for actually drawing us a picture here. As you can see, we got the whole digestive system here. Uh, I can't draw, so I have to thank my media team for doing stuff. So what I want you to think about is this. When you look at fat soluble vitamins, when you look at vitamin A, all right, Here's the, here's the whole thing. They're called fat soluble vitamins because they, if you just eat them and you're missing a certain organ, a lot of times you won't absorb them whatsoever, okay? Now, all of our fat soluble vitamins, let, let me write them out for you. You got vitamin, you know, A, D, K, and E, okay? And we're gonna talk mainly about this, but it's all those two. Now, what they need, okay, they're fat soluble. I want you guys to do me a little favor. I want you to grab some water and some coconut oil, or even olive oil, or even avocado oil. Put it on top of the water. And if you see, it actually, it's a fat. It needs to be broken down to actually diffuse into the water. Well, then go grab some Dawn dish soap and take a couple drops. You know what it does? It spreads apart, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it actually, the Dawn dish soap actually broke it down into small chain fatty acids and then it become, became part of the water. Well, when you eat something, that fat soluble vitamin is gonna go to our stomach and move into our small intestine and here's the key, the gallbladder. The gallbladder produces the bile, excuse me, the liver produces the bile, the gallbladder actually does what? Actually stores it and it recognizes when we eat healthy fats and releases it from the gallbladder. The gallbladder is not a storage unit. The gallbladder is a sensory organ that stores bile and releases when they actually notice fatty acids and stuff start to come through the digestive tract. 
It comes from the stomach, opens to the sphincter. It goes down and the gallbladder says, hey, I sense fatty fat. And I need to break that down to small chain fatty acids in order to absorb it in the intestinal tract. Well, if you guys go back in a couple videos, gallbladder surgery is number one in the United States. It's still the most dominant surgery. They're ripping out gallbladders and doctors tell you this BS. Let me say it again. Doctors tell you this BS. You can live extremely healthy without your gallbladder. No, you can survive, but you can't really live. That's why if you notice, a lot of reasons why people in older are starting to get bad skin conditions is because they lack a gallbladder or they have gallstones or they don't produce enough of bile by the liver. So you can actually even have infections in the liver like hepatitis that actually will reduce your bile production so there's barely any to go to the gallbladder and sit there. It's interesting because they've actually shown in many studies hepatitis B will actually reduce it dramatically. How does it reduce the, gall, gall, or the bile in, in gallbladder function? It's because it affects the liver negatively. It's actually hepatitis. And actually now there's a, a loss of production of bile and now there's no bile. See, so when they're injecting you with hepatitis B on first day, let me say again, a first day of life, I wonder why your, skin, your kid gets skin issues so early in life, okay? It's really sad because you can actually have a massive reduction in vitamin A or any of the fat soluble absorption by a stomach problem. One of the major stomach problems is hypochlorhydria. One of the major stomach problems is the fact that if it gets infected, we don't have enough stomach acid that can really trigger some of the gallbladder release. So stomach issues, liver issues, no gallbladder. You say, doc, hold the phone. I'm gonna make my stomach good, I'll make sure my liver is good, but what if I don't have a gallbladder? Then you need to take bile salts, gallbladder formula. You can look up on our website, gallbladder formula for the rest of your life, every time you eat. I wish your doctor would have told you that. I, they think I'm a bad guy, or our doctors come across the world are saying, you don't have a gallbladder, you have to take something before you eat every single time. What? My doctor never told me that. He never told you a lot of things. He also told you a lot of things you also didn't need a gallbladder. Sorry, that's the thinking that perpetuates out there and they're misleading and lying to you. This is just basic anatomy. This is just basic what? Physiology, biochemistry. That's why you need to stop listening and start learning because sometimes you're learning too late. I know a lot of you guys right now are going, Man, I got a bad skin issue. I don't have a gallbladder. Yeah, don't get wrong. With, with proper care and proper guidance, well, you can make that skin very good. But the idea is this. There's things that you have to do internally and externally to make that good, okay? So understand, this GI can't even absorb those fatty acids without this upper GI working first. So if you've had those surgeries, guess what happens? You need to take a good look at what you can do on a daily basis to get that, that fatty acids break down. So, Let's go next, back. Now, got it? Now, what we need to do is here. I want to think about this. So, as we are going through saying, well, if it's avascular, okay, and it's avascular, what can happen, all right? Well, once again, you, then you need to feed a lot of stuff from the outside. It's why I put that picture out on Sunday. That's a normal process for me and my wife and my kiddos that way, is putting things on our skin that are actually very good as far as vitamin A and other fat soluble vitamins and vitamin A primarily, all right? Number one, what I'm gonna do now is this, but let's see what people can eat, what people can eat that will do a great job of actually helping them get their vitamin A. So where does it come from? Where does vitamin A come from? Well, first of all, I want to do this. I want to talk about the retinoids, the retinol that you get from vitamin A. That's vitamin A. Most people don't realize that there's multiple forms of vitamin A. Now, actually, let me correct that. There's really only one form of vitamin A, and then there's actually, a, they call it a provitamin, which is the major form is beta carotene that your liver has to convert into retinol. All right, let me say it again. Has to convert it into the vitamin A form. So you can either eat direct vitamin A or you can actually do what? You can have your body convert it, which is much more difficult. Actually, and sometimes not even accomplishable when people are so sick today, all right? So that's why if you ever look, what I'm gonna talk about is not liked a lot because a lot of people don't like this stuff. 
But here's your direct forms of vitamin A. Best sources. Number one, beef liver. Yes, I said it. If you look at our history, let's go back this. Ask your grandma and grandpa. Liver paste and liver and organ meats, for example, especially liver, were a common practice and a common form of eating generations ago. That's why if you look today, how many skin conditions there are, or even acne, that have increased massively over the last 30 years is ridiculous. If you try to tell a child right now today to eat liver, they would freak out, okay? Now, I know what some of you guys that understand health are saying. You said, Doc, but if you look at, you know, um, a cow, their liver is so toxic. No, it's not. If you get a great year-round grass-fed liver, it's fantastic for you. It's one of the best foods on the planet for you. And I also see a bunch of, you, a bunch of the vegans going, but I will never eat liver. Yeah, guess what? I see your skin. It's not that good, okay? I see it. I, I actually, I understand you may have something about not eating animals. Okay, fine. But then you better make sure that your liver is doing so well that you can take the vegetable sources, which I will show you, which are pro-vitamins A's. They're not real vitamin A's. They're pro-vitamins. It's a precursor that way. So therefore, you got to remember, can't guarantee they're going to convert. And if you have acne and stuff right now, it takes a high demand to restore things. So it may take you a long time, sometimes years to make those changes, okay, in order to get those skin changes. Now, what's next? Cod liver oil. Cod liver oil. So if you just don't want to eat uh, um, liver itself, do cod liver oil. It's not as good. It is still great. I mean, I love cod liver oil. I take it on a regular basis. Um, because why? Because I just want to give myself a sufficiency, and so I take it in pill form. Now, what's a good source? Uh, you can go to almost any health food store and get a good pure source of vitamin A cod liver oil. It's quite simple, just cod liver oil, all right? Now, capsules, you want to taste the fishy taste because, yes, it does taste fishy. There's something you got to concern yourself with, all right? Egg yolks. But, Doc, eggs are bad for you. No, they're not. Egg yolks are one of the greatest things, okay, that you can ever do for your skin. Actually, it's kind of funny. You say, Doc, hold the phone. You actually have an egg allergy. Yes. But that's why there's more eggs than actually chicken eggs. That's why I eat duck eggs. If you want to do something really good for your skin, take a hard-boiled egg and take one to work. It's very sufficient in many nutrients besides vitamin A, but you can do what? You can eat one of those every other day. Now, the reason why I say every other day because I don't like people eating the same thing every day with the exception of certain vegetables, all right? Now, what's next? Oh, I love this. Goat cheese. Goat cheese. I had goat cheese cheese curds this weekend and stuff, and uh, I love the squishiness of them. They're absolutely delicious. They're amazing. You can, we, have, uh, we have local organic goat farmers here. It's uh, uh, just high good vitamin A. Actually, when we make pizza, because who doesn't love pizza? We have all the great gluten-free crust made greatly, and then we have all our tomato sauce, our good cheeses, and throwing goat cheese on there. Goat cheese pizza is absolutely delicious. And something I just recently started doing a little bit is lamb liver and lamb itself. Obviously, lamb liver, it's a very good pure animal. It's easy to raise. And I didn't raise it myself. We bought them from an organic farmer here locally. And it's actually absolutely amazing. Now, if you look, if you look, animal products. Really is, animal products. If you, especially organ-based products. Once again, one of the major things that you need to do. Now, that alone, when I started to do that, I started to see beautiful skin. So let's say you don't even have a skin issue, okay? You still need to actually eat things to give your body the sufficiency in order to do it to protect your skin long term. It actually does a reduction in wrinkles. It does a reduction in the conditions that you could be susceptible for, including infections. Now, let's look at here. So, Doc, well, at least give us the pro-vitamin A stuff because I just can't get myself to eat an animal product. Okay, I'm going to give you the best sources. Now, you guys better get number one right. Brandon, what's that number one? I know, he's like, what? I don't know. Now, most people don't know this, but the best source by far of pro-vitamin A and actually other really dense nutrients is actually kale. Kale. That's why, if you wonder why, I love kale chips. Now, they're wrong. Kale itself tastes horrible. It's really bitter. But that's why we decide to make it good and make our kale chips that way. Bake them, put 
sea salt on them, put Celtic salt on them, put garlic. We talked about garlic when it came to cancers. So you can actually do the things to feed your body to do it well. It's one of the best pro sources that way. What else? Sweet potatoes. Yes, make some sweet potato fries. Want to do something really good? Take great oils and actually we bake them and make them all the time. My girls are obsessed with sweet potatoes. We have sweet potato fries multiple times per week. And the cool thing is you can kill two birds with one stone because you know why? Because you can actually put the oils that I'm going to show you that you want to put on your skin, but you also put on your food that does a great job. Number three, carrots. We kind of know that. See, it has high beta carotene. And once again, your eyes itself. Let me show you guys something that's significant, okay? Do you understand that one of the major signs of actually vitamin A deficiency is actually hard to drive at night? Not night blindness, because we say the word blindness, but actually noticing it's hard to differentiate contrast. You're getting some macular degeneration that way. That's why good doses of vitamin A in your foods, you'll start to notice your night blindness starts to change. Remember, every tissue in your body can regenerate if it has the sufficient things to do it. So that's why by doing, you know, carrots, that's why they said, oh, it's good for the eyes. Well, there's other things better for the eyes than carrots. And sometimes you got to watch out about some of these vegetables. I know a lot of people juice carrots. Got to watch out for your insulin levels, all right? Now, what other things? Spinach, broccoli, red peppers, mangoes. All these things are actually more of the highest base vitamin, pro-vitamin A foods that you can do. So now, but Doc, you actually showed us um, what you could do for your skin and what you had on your skin. So why that when we listed all these oils, why did you choose these? Do you know what I went back and counted? We had over 600 comments when people tried to guess what oils I used. And do you know what the number one guess was when it came to oils? Does anybody, anybody know? Jo uh, jojoba oil, okay? The reason why that oil is so well known is because it has high vitamin E and it brings moisture back to your skin. But if you have acne, you don't wanna do that. You have plenty of moisture in your skin and you actually can create actually more acne from that, all right? So that's why if you notice most of the skin oils that you guys put down there, they were moisturizers. They, they had vitamin E, okay, and, and other things and they actually bring moisture to the skin so it looks puffy and beautiful and full. But I talked about, once again, when you talk about acne and skin conditions, sometimes you gotta be very careful with that because if you add more moisture, more fluid, you can actually perpetuate infections because it has a breeding ground now. So be very careful. That's why you see, I had a bad reaction to jojoba oil. Well, you just gave more of a breeding ground for bacteria that are hanging out there because you're really vitamin A deficient. So let's go through my favorite skin oils. Number one, coconut oil. I threw this next one in here because, once again, I'll put this on my skin. It's just that we eat enough of this that really uh, I don't really put it on my skin a lot because we get it internally, and that's avocado or avocado oil, all right? Absolutely amazing. Once again, high great levels of vitamin A. CBD oil, ah, yes. Hemp as a food should be eaten on a regular basis, but also CBD oil because, once again, the vitamin A concentration, and also the microbial effects it has, and also the anti-inflammatory effects it has. These are great things to put on your skin. It's kind of great, and it's very calming to the skin itself. Number three, here it was, rose hips oil, okay? Now, I don't sell rose hips oil. People, I got like 30 messages like that first night. Um, Uriah, who's here in the studio, he came to Doc, you know, what oil, guys, listen, Research your oils. Um, I don't like to tell a lot of people the certain things I use for two reasons. Because they think I have some tie to them. And second of all, there's a lot of great oils out there and things that you can research. I know when people talk to me about essential oils, all these essential oils brag about they're the best. I can tell you right now, there is not much difference between doTERRA, Young Living, and the other companies out there. Um, once again, you know, there's other companies that have great oils out there. They just fight about the process. You ask them how they know it, and they don't know. Someone told them. Well, I've done some deep research on all this stuff. See, that's why I tell people, I don't want you to listen to me. Start learning, do your own research. I'm just hoping we're giving you a different perspective that you're going to move in that direction and say, I'm not gonna listen to anybody and do my own learning, okay? So once again, rose hips oil is high in vitamin A. Let me say again, 
high in vitamin A. I'm not looking for the other things to moisturize skin. I'm looking for that regenerative aspect. I'm looking for that control. I'm looking for that sebum oil production. I'm making sure that we don't have too much or too little. That's what we're looking for with rose hips oil. What else? Virgin palm oil. Got to be careful with this one though. Okay, let me say this. I put it up there because I knew that once people start to research, I saw it a couple times on the uh, uh, thing. Virgin palm oil is actually very good vitamin A, but you got to be careful. It actually goes rancid much quicker than any oil, much quicker than the other oils that are good in vitamin A. So be careful with virgin palm oil. If you get a good source that's not that old, I'm a fan of it. It's just that it's kind of like this. People ask me about, Doc, uh, do you like this sweetener? I'm like, no. Like, well, it's good for you. Yes, but there's six others that are better than that. So why would I use number seven? All right, just like virgin palm oil, I put up there because there were some comments about it when I did ask that question uh, about what oils did I use, and this was up there because it is actually a good oil for your skin. Now, once again, we have so much access to the other ones, I probably never use it. But I wanna put this up here. I wanna put egg yolks up here. See, no joke, if you actually remove the egg white, or the egg white from the egg yolk, what you can do now is you can actually put that on your skin. I have literally had patients that had horrible acne. And I said, listen, how quickly do you want to see your body take this and change it? And they're like, doc, I'll do anything. I'm like, really? I know people say they'll do anything. And, they, and then you ask them to do things and they don't do it. Um, but I've had many patients, especially women, okay, that had horrible acne. And I said, listen, I want you to put this on your skin, but I want you to take an egg yolk. I want you to blend it up and I want you to actually put it on your skin. And they're like, what? I'm like, listen, the content that you can get from an egg yolk, you need to feed your skin from the outside because it's avascular. And, and if you don't have enough vitamin A internally, it's not gonna diffuse through. So you need to feed the skin while you're doing it. Dermatologists and other skincare things, they do what? They're always trying to manage and manipulate the skin. We're talking about restoring the skin back to normal. You know, dermatologists, for example, have done a very disservice to our whole world from this standpoint. You know, LA Times came out with this article. And yes, you're gonna see as I bring you a different perspective, I have to criticize some things that are hurting people at a very high rate. If you look here, new study may deal final blow to Accutane, acne drug Accutane, okay? What they found out, what they're doing now, is obviously the drug companies uh, you know, fighting back because they've already had to pay out hundreds of millions as damage that way. But why do you care about paying out 100 million in, in fines when you make two billion a year? You say, I'm, and you say, well, Doc, you know, we should have Congress step in. They pay Congress. This is not a joke. Roche is a, R O C H E is a big donator to all of the politicians, even though they are in Switzerland. It's kind of sad. This is what happens to our world today. This is, for example, and, and guess what? It doesn't matter if this article is on every news network, which it won't be, because once again, they control the media. You think I'm joking, we're, we'll get censored eventually. But the idea is this, they're actually showing all these major things that are happening to people, and it's affecting them, causing inflammatory bowel disease, causing things that are, are horrible besides birth defects. And it's really funny, and it's really interesting how they talk about you know, how 1% uh, of these people actually have some debilitating kind of condition that way. And teenagers and young adults suffering from severe scarring acne may ultimately lose the most effective treatment for this condition. Let me re re read that again to you. Teenagers and young adults suffering from severe scarring acne may ultimately lose the most effective treatment for this condition. If that is the most effective treatment for our whole 50 million people in the United States are suffering and the millions if not billions all over the world that experience acne, we better change our damn thinking. If this is the best and you're telling me they're educated, you're telling me that research said, you're telling me that all these things actually, and my dermatologist said that Accutane is good, you gotta, you gotta do what? You have to recheck what you're, you're being told because if this is the most effective thing, we're down the wrong path and skin conditions continue to get worse, acne continues to get worse, and all these things do. So I've said this so many times. We need to stop listening and start learning. 
Okay, we need to start learning because what I just brought you through is something that is very easily researched. It's not like, for example, you can't understand how the body works. Nobody can stop you from learning. Okay, nobody can. If they take the internet away, we'll do it in a book. You take the book away, we'll do it somewhere else. Before all this stuff existed. All right, just remember, people are, are suffering at an all time high. Um, I can honestly tell you, the motivating factor between all of our docs across the world is actually sick people. Sick people. Because the doctors give them advice, and the sad part is this, like I told you at Accutane, this is the greatest thing we have for people, a chemo-based drug that they're trying to produce that now, for example, has caused so many birth defects and so many conditions, and all they do is fight, and they say, yes, thank God they got to find 100 million. 100 million doesn't matter when they make 2 billion. 100 million doesn't matter when they tie up these people and sometimes they actually lose their life because of what's happening with them. It's kind of sad. So now what we're going to do for uh, uh, a minute is this. Can you do me a favor? Can you comment below? Tell me what you think. Tell me if you think I'm full of crap. Tell me if you like what you're learning. Tell me, for example, the things that you want to learn. See, I have no problem if you actually have di uh, disagree with me. I don't. Heck, my whole world's based on I disagree. I disagree is still a number one international bestseller because everybody's sick. Um, everybody's sick and what's going on. We need to do this. So please comment below if you like. Please comment below if you don't like, but do me a favor. If you don't like, do this. Give me your perspective. You know what I'm saying? Give me your perspective. I'm going to always share you my perspective and what led me to figure this out. So I'm not just telling you eat this and do this. I'm sharing my whole life and clinical experience that actually led to why the Wellness Way is so big and doing so much amazing things now across the world. And as we continue to grow, I'm going to continue to do more things so you can learn. But don't listen to me. Remember, stop listening and start learning. I'm hoping I provoke a thought in your brain. I'm trying to implant an idea in your brain, a concept in your brain that just drives you to actually want to be a learner. Can you do me a favor? Can you write this in the comments for me? I commit to be a lifelong learner. Do me a favor, write that in the comments. I commit to be a lifelong learner. I commit to be a lifelong learner. I continually will, because I want to bring the best stuff to you all the time. I don't listen to anybody. I don't. Actually, sometimes it's got a lot of criticism for me, but it's like, I don't want to listen. I want to learn. And I want to make sense to people and I want to share it with you. So please write that in the comments for me. And actually, let's impact together. Share what I brought to you today. Do you understand that there's young ladies, young men out there, adults, women, but especially the young kids today, they actually won't leave their house because their skin issue is so bad. Let them know there's hope. What if it could change their life? So thank you guys so much for watching today. But before you go, the greatest thing, and it's almost tear jerking to me right now, that I have is the fact that I've shared this idea and concept now for 20 years. And people now all over the world are grasping on and say, I want to do this. We actually had a, a, a board meeting this, this week, and uh, it's kind of cool. So docs from all over the country flew in. I don't have all of them here, but I do still have some of them that has lived in my house. They stayed at my house they, 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 um, because, once again, these people and others and all the docs across the country are actually always welcome because I want them to see the life that I live. I want them to see my beautiful bride. I want them to see my great kids. I want to show them that priorities and my six priorities can lead to a great life. I want to show people that, for example, that I'm not full of shit. I want to show people that I live what I preach. I want to show you when you actually come to our house that everything's organic, that everything's gluten-free from our cleaning products, everything that way because we live what we preach. We do. So I'm gonna, I want just to bring this, these beautiful people over here, and I want to thank all the board members and people that came in, but I just want, uh, uh, do we have a mic or anything just for all of them to tell who they are there? I just want them to um, tell who they are and share just a minute that way. So I'm going to step over to the side and let these beautiful people you know, speak and stuff like that, and then I'll, then I'll end when they're done to introduce themselves. And once again, for all you board members that came here and actually sat here and uh, um, went through and shared and came up with ideas, because what these guys did and others, what they did is they came with ideas, not only to make our practitioners the best on the planet, but how do we share this concept and idea to everybody across the world? But we need you. You can't do anything with other great people. I've said that repeatedly. 
I always tell people, I know it's funny, I always say the, the concept of Lone Ranger, that TV show should be sued. Because you know what's up then? There's no such thing as one great person. There's a person that recognizes greatness in all people and realize you can't do it with other great people, and great people are developed. So we are constantly developing ourselves. So please introduce you guys yourself. I'm going to step over to your side. And if you want to share anything, because we have a ton of people on and stuff like that, and actually share we are, share, you know, we practice some of that. And so we'll meet these beautiful people. So uh, I'm Dr. Justin. This is my wife, Dr. Shannon. <laughs> Dr. Shannon. And uh, we're, we're in Lexington. And, and, you know, just a quick story, um, you know, Lexington where? Lexington, Kentucky. Thank there's you. multiple. There's only one Lexington. You say only Lexington. Everybody yeah. knows <laughs> UK. No, okay. Lexington, Kentucky. And, um, you know, you know, we we're, we're chiropractors up in Lexington. We've been up there for a long time. And, um, you know, my wife got sick. And this is a qu quick story of a longer version. Right. But um, uh, Dr. Patrick, we, we ended up getting up with him and in uh, just a very different approach and a very different perspective helped us change her and if you can see over the uh podium thing here there, there's something growing in there and uh and you know we had issues getting pregnant and and dr patrick helped us through uh you know just testing and, and figuring out a different approach in a different way and um and now we have a miracle on the way so it's, it's just been amazing wellness way is awesome you guys there's a lot of people on here today that's so cool we're just uh making movements and um it's awesome stuff so miss court I'm Dr. Courtney Mosley, and my husband and I practice in Hendersonville, Tennessee, which is just north of Nashville, Tennessee. So um, we have a similar story, and I think it's really cool to let people know, like, you might have a similar story, but everybody has uh, a different story. And so um, that's why we don't have protocols, because I can't give Shannon what she needs, and it'd be the exact same thing that I need. And so I struggled with terrible period cramps, extreme fatigue, enough to almost not be able to practice and um, that was a deal breaker I was like hey like you know I just push through my health usually but I can barely go into the office and so it started um, with my husband coming to me and essentially being like hey um, we've got an issue and I'm, I'm essentially losing my wife and my business partner and so um, we reached out to Dr. Patrick and actually heard from um, these two guys we've been friends for over 10 years and they just started sharing that, hey, I think he can help you. So um, you can hear a little bit of my husband's side of the story of that too, so. Wait, 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 don't, don't share the mic yet. Doc, what do you have going on this week at, at, down in Nashville? We actually okay. have a hormone talk yes. this Thursday yes. and I do them every two weeks. And so I'm super excited about that, getting geared up. So this was the perfect weekend for us to come um, so I could get excited and, and ready to help everybody. I think it's going to be our biggest one. We've probably had 10 and they just increasingly get full and we're almost sold out. So I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm Dr. Justin Mosley, Dr. Courtney's husband. So yeah, anybody around Nashville, Middle Tennessee, come out this Thursday, see Dr. Courtney's Hormone Talk, because her life was changed by Dr. Patrick. Now she's using her story to change lives of men and women all over the country. And it, was, it all comes from sharing your story, because Dr. Shannon shared her story, and that's how we even heard about it. And that allowed us, when Dr. Courtney got sick, we were like, we gotta reach out to Dr. Patrick as well. And so a lot of you guys have been touched by Dr. Patrick about by the wellness way. Continue to share your story because there's somebody out there watching you and they're going to see your health journey and your story can help change their life. So continue to share your stories. Hey, everybody. Dr. Dennis Lancaster, Massachusetts. So one of the most exciting things about me being in the wellness way is I, I was able to build a pretty successful practice. We have another practice opening Sudbury, Massachusetts in September. One of the best things I realized coming with these guys this weekend is it's really time for me to start taking care of myself better. So I've been taking care of people for a long time and that includes uh, not necessarily me and my family. So some of you guys might be able to relate to somebody like me better than some of these guys. So there are all different Wellness Way docs at different areas of their life. So just find the one that's right for you, get connected, and that's what makes our family so awesome. So thanks for watching. Yeah. So just to finish up too, you just heard from all of us in our stories. Um, I'm pregnant, so I'm going to cry. Like I would probably cry anyway, so I'm going to extra cry because we just love it here. Um, 
but for all of us, like nobody is exempt from struggle. And I think that's so important for everybody to know. Um, but this is where the best of the best comes. Like if we come here to get our help and our healing and our answers, and then we get the transformations that we've all gotten in our lives and we want to share them with you, like there is no better place to be. So if you're struggling with anything, health issues, hormone issues, fatigue, depression, if you just need to get on track, maybe you know all of this stuff, you've been listening for years, you're not practicing it, get connected, find an office, watch the videos, get online. We work with people all over the world. You don't have to be local to an office. Get on a phone call with us. Um, there's no more excuses because there's enough of us who want to help you reach out. That's your first step. You've got to do it. Get involved with this because I promise you it will change your life if you implement the same way we all have. That's right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank everybody out there, give, uh, give some love, give some hearts to these guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to answer some questions. So. All right, Fancy Nancy. First of all, um, the one thing is this, the one thing I love that they said, everybody has a story. And I always tell people, I nev never judge a person's story where they're at. I try to inject what I know into their story and try to make a beautiful novel out of it that way. And that's why doing this is such a fulfillment every single day. As, they, as Dr. Um, Shan just said, Remember, you may not be, we, don't, we have lots of wellness ways, but we don't have them everywhere. If you're not by a wellness way, please call somebody. Everybody has a unique story. If you have a story like one of these docs that way, you know, um, call them. It's going to be quite awesome for you to experience this this way. I'm very proud of what we have done over 20 years. And uh, I, as I said, and it takes great people. So now Nancy uh, said there is a bunch of questions. So for a short time here, I know. We, have quite, we always have question and answer that way, and they're coming through by the truckloads from all over the world. Um, and so we're just going to take a couple today just to be able to answer some of those. So Nancy, what do you have? you have your mic? Yep, I have a mic. Okay, um, what's got? One of the biggest ones from Molly is what testing can we do to show low vitamin A? Um, actually, there's some, there's some that you can do that do a great job of, uh, um, I actually like a spectra cell test. You can do a micronutrient test that actually can show it. Plus there's also some pathway testing that you can do. Once again, um, urine pathway tests you could do that will make, uh, um, and I think Great Lakes um, has one, uh, Genova has one that you can do that actually can show some of those deficiencies. All right, what about when kids get bumps behind their arms? My four-year-old is dealing with that. Any suggestions? Yes, there's two things that happen with that, all right? Now, I'm going to go over more skin issues than just this alone. We're going to cover that in the next couple of months. But start here, all right? Whenever you just have the small bumps that are not, not a keratinosis that way, um, what you want to do is this. You probably have some food allergy. It's actually usually gluten that actually causes just those bumps in the back, gluten or dairy. So obviously get your foods tested. It's the most common thing that causes that. But uh, um, I would actually start there if you just want to remove those two things out of diet. Do me a favor, guys. Get rid of gluten, dairy, corn, and soy. Now, corn, if you have some non-GMO corn, you'll be fine. Uh, I don't have a problem with that, as long as you're not allergic to it. But getting allergy tested is actually one good thing to change a lot of skin issues. What do you got, Nancy? All right. I hear that you can put cod liver or fish oil in the freezer, yep. ingest it frozen, no fishy taste. What yes. are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you can freeze it. You can actually make popsicles out of it. So, yes, that is true. Oh, that's all. That, yep. that, that, yeah, because Great. I know, trust me, I take my cod liver oil pills. I used to, to actually take the liquid, but then every time I burped, guess what I tasted? Fish. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe, and I love fish, but it kind of made me not want fish for a while. So I'm like, dang, I can't do this. And I didn't say couldn't. I just said, I'm going to find a different way. And so um, um, once again, I don't have a ties to this company, but I know people are going to ask. Let me say again, I don't have a ties to this company. I personally use Nordic Naturals. You can, and the reason why I like them, they're very pure, but you can get them anywhere. Just stop to a local, a local health food store, go to Whole Foods, go anywhere that way. And Nordic Naturals has a wonderful cod liver oil that I do love and stuff. Um, but once again, I, I gotta say this, I know I read this every time, I don't have any ties to them. I don't get kickbacks, I don't get stuff of this, but I do wanna tell you that's something that you could readily get that can make a big difference. All right, if you have an egg yolk sensitivity, can you put it on your skin? Nope cannot put it on your skin. Remember, if you have any allergy, you cannot. If I put an egg yolk, now get this, Dr. Ryan Miller was here this weekend, okay? First of all, let's say hi to Jackie Miller, his beautiful wife had her birthday today. Happy birthday, Jackie. Um, thank you for sharing Ryan with us uh, Thursday, and he flew down and saw his beautiful bride uh, at birthday, otherwise he would have stayed. 
But if Ryan Miller was here two years ago, two years ago, we were at our Wellness Way Invitational. Yes, we do have a golf trip. And I, I was riding with Dr. Ryan Miller, and all of a sudden, uh, it was extremely hot out there. It was our first round after morning. I said, hey, Doc, can I have a sip of your water? I took a sip. He's like, sure, Doc, grab it. So I took a sip of his water, and it's not a joke. Brandon was there. Dr. Dennis was there. There's a couple people there. Uh, now, everybody has seen the movie uh, Avengers probably about now. And my, my chin puffed up, and I looked like Thanos. It did. It was painful. It was huge. I had lines. And I'm like, what the heck? I didn't eat eight eggs for breakfast. Found out that Dr. Ryan Miller, actually, in, our, in the condo, made some good organic eggs and stuff of like that. And he ate them. And when he took a sip of his water, just even the protein left over on there made me react. So if I put egg on my body, it's going to swell. So please, if you are allergic. See, people say, Doc, you love coconut oil. You love avocado oil. You love uh, um, eggs. You love all those things like this. Uh, yes, but you love apple cider vinegar. You do brag about apple cider vinegar and how good it is for you. Yes, but if you're allergic to an apple, please don't touch it. Okay, please don't touch it. Okay. But it's just a sensitivity, right? Uh, there is no such thing as a sensitivity. <laughs> There's a, now, a sensitivity is a made-up BS world trying to live in the medical world. I'm telling you now, I, I'm going to figure out how to explain this, but I'm not playing their game anymore. And what I mean by that is this. They have a different way of thinking. That's cool. We think differently. I don't try to make the wellness way world into a natural. It's not functional medicine. It's not medical. It's not integrative. That's not what we do. So the idea of anybody ever uses the word sensitivity, they're trying to differentiate themselves from medical thinking, and they're trying to make it less you know, um, detrimental to their body. That's not a proper term. There's, your body reacts to allergic reactions, not a sensitivity. They're all called hypersensitivity. So are they hypersensitivities? Yes. Are they sensitivities? No. All right. How long do you keep the egg yolk on your face, and how often can you use it? Um, never do anything on a daily basis. Let me say that again. Um, I do not like seeing people do the same things every day. Because why? Because you can start to trigger to it, okay? So I tell people a good rule of thumb is when you eat something, do it every other day. Uh, that's if I have a chicken breast last night, I'm not having chicken breast today. If I, for example, have, now there is one exception to that, let me say about this, but this can even happen too. Because if your digestive system is messed up, you can even start reacting to vegetables, all right? You can probably get away with eating um, the same vegetable every day if it's a green, if it's a green. Uh, greens, uh, uh, your immune system doesn't really have a, a high allergic response to them that way, but it can. I can show you people that are allergic to kale. I can show you people that are allergic to avocados, everything. But I would just say, uh, anything that you put on your skin, make sure to rotate it. Don't use the same cream every day. Don't use the same shampoo every day. Don't, I know that's frustrating. You say, Doc, I got have two different shampoos in my shower? Yes, because buying two different shampoos and paying me, not me, because I don't take new patients, but paying my doctors $500 to show up, I think you can afford two bottles of shampoo. <laughs> Okay. All right. Lots of questions about the eggs. So this is the last one. Mm -hmm. um, I just worry that eggs feed viruses. Um, okay. We're going to do a whole thing just on viruses alone. Viruses and bacteria can only affect you if you're immune compromised, especially viruses. If you're immune compromised, you better be scared of a cold virus. Do you say I'm? But you got to remember, your, your actual uh, virus wants your DNA is what they really want. That's what they're getting in to do to cause replication, okay? So, uh, and actually the funny part is this. If you look at the lysozymes in egg uh, whites itself, actually does a great job of killing bacteria and viruses. So I, wouldn't, I don't see the correlation why you'd be worried about viruses and eggs. Maybe because some doctor told you something and now you believe it. Anything else? All right. Um, the only other one is what about eczema? Do we have a separate video just on eczema? Okay. Actually, I'm going to do atopic dermatitis eczema actually in a couple weeks. Okay. We have it scheduled out. Our wonderful media team that partials here, Brandon, Uriah, and uh, Fancy Nancy, but we have a big, immune, uh, huge team of media teams. Going to do it. They actually have the topics laid out for us. Uh, and I will tell you this. I've had this question. Doc, can you lay out what you're going to be talking about over the next two months? No. Do you know why? Because I'll walk to our media team and say, we need to cover this. Because you know why? Because what actually sometimes dictates what I speak about is what you want. And when I see a huge amount of suffering in some area, 
I will teach you about it. I will give you things to implant that idea in your brain so you can learn and then do your own research that way. So you're gonna find out. I don't lay out a schedule, even though I say, Doc, but you are prepared when you get here, yes. Because I've been doing this clinically. It's not hard for me to teach. Do you know why it's not hard for me to teach? Because this is clinical for me. I was never a professor. I never taught anybody. But what happened is I had to figure this out so I could be a great clinician. So when you are suffering, reach out. When you are going to reach out, you know, please don't reach out for care for me because I can't take care of you uh, because I just, um, I have so many things getting this idea to the world going on. And even though I do take care of patients, uh, only a small little bit uh, that I've taken care of for a long time, you just saw five amazing people up here now uh, that, that could take care of you. You say, Sam, you have the Green Bay docs, you have the, the Hawaii docs, you have the Pittsburgh docs, you have the Florida docs, you have everybody. Do you say, Sam, find one of the docs that appeal to you and actually maybe, and I always tell people this, you know, people, I built my whole practice on females and I'm not a female, okay? Because they can relate to my wife's story. Honestly, personally, I get bored talking about male situations. You know why? Don't really have them. But you understand that when you're suffering with something, it's very easy to walk into Dr. Courtney after you hear her story and actually shed some tears with her because she did it herself. It's easy to walk into Dr. Shannon's story and do the same thing, and they're different stories. So find somebody, a doc, that maybe have the same story as you. That's why the doctors are so vulnerable about what they went through, and actually maybe their story can help you, okay? It's, 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 it, remember, if you're sick and suffering, don't sit there anymore. Reach out. Send an email. Send a Facebook. You know, all these docs you saw, all docs across country have their own personal Facebooks and emails that you can reach out to that do a wonderful job, all right? So please, I ask you, don't suffer anymore. Suffering, is, if you're suffering today, it's a long day. Don't make it long. There's hope. What if, just by reaching out, it could change the direction in your life? What if? There, there's a, um, a lady that was on who's been taking Accutane for four months. She said that she wishes that she had seen this earlier. Is there anything that she can do now? Yes. And the reason why she's taking it for four months, because it's working. See, drugs always work. My, my, if I give Dustin, uh, Dustin, if I give Dr. Justin and Dr. Justin Viagra right now, guess what? They don't need it, but it's going to work. Do you say <laughs> Okay. I don't have any Viagra. Okay. That's it. Yeah, let's test that. Okay. No, they, they, because why? Drugs always work. It will change the, the blood flow and they will get an erection. Accutane works. It does. But if it works, you need vitamin A. Do you get that? If it works, you need vitamin A. Watch this, guys. There's people that have other forms of acne and skin conditions that have take Accutane and it didn't work. Do you know why? Because it could have been a food allergy. It could have been a, uh, an infection in the GI. We're gonna get into all those situations. See, that's the coolest thing about our docs. They actually investigate to where it's coming from and when the skin resolves, it's because the body got back normal, the skin didn't take a beating anymore, okay? Anything else there, Fancy okay. Nancy? Um, what can they do for the harmful effects of taking the Accutane? Okay, so let's start here. In this, in the, the, I think it was halfway into the video, I said something that floors me. When somebody comes to us and they get results, they're like, it's a miracle. Do you know why they consider it a miracle? Docs, you ever wonder why they consider it a miracle? Because they've been so programmed since they were little that they have to go to a doc to heal. Guys, cut your finger right now. There's not one doctor that knows to put that exactly where it belongs, but one thing does, the, the amazingness of what your body is created like. God has made it so amazing for you. We've, uh, we've forgot the appreciation of what we were created. This thing is absolutely mind-blowing, amazing. I'm obsessed with it. I'm actually more obsessed with the female body because that thing just goes in all directions. And, it, and, it, and if you think that, you know, we just, you know, you know, crawled out of the primordial soup of some algae and we began this, you are a special kind of something, okay? Because the idea is this, because you understand the complexity of this, you're going, there has to be an amazing creation that did this because I'm sorry, you know, I just can't see how this just all fell together because it works so beautifully. Your body can adapt to the craziest things. It's amazing. It will do everything it can to survive. It's genetically programmed to survive on this earth as long as it possibly can. So now, with that said, yes, with that said, guess what? You, as long as you don't have any permanent damage, your body can repair and regenerate massively. 
That's why a person that has cancer, it can go away. That's why a person that has a thyroid problem, it can go away. Your body wants to be normal, but you can't run a car that has no fuel. You can't actually let the toe heal if you're stubbing it on a cement block every day. You can't actually heal if you're so damn stressed out because you're beaten by your husband, which was something I heard this week from a person that called me, and it was devastating, okay? You just need to put the body in the best environment for it to heal. And our current medical system may save your life. If you break your arm, God bless. Medicine is the fire department. They may keep you alive, but if you depend on them, you'll be sick as it can be. All right, Sylvia is wondering, is baby acne on newborns from breastfed babies coming from the mom? Or can baby be vitamin A deficient too? Yeah. The mom also most, has acne. Most babies are vitamin A deficient because moms are vitamin A deficient. Uh, you know what's really interesting? Watch this. I'm going to put the link on there. And um, maybe Nancy, maybe I will give it to you. But I'm going to show you the link today. Do you know what the number one effective treatment for measles is? Measles, it's on the National Institute of Health website on there. Vitamin A. If you're vitamin A deficient, you're more susceptible to measles. Guess what? Why do you think we have less vitamin A or less measles over here? Think it was a vaccine? No, no, not at all. What happens is because we are not as deficient as other countries are. Malnutrition still affects over a billion people. You know, that's why I kind of laugh when people talk about that you're poor in the United States. Do you understand if you make $30,000 a year, you're in 1% in the world? Do you understand? So you're gonna hear a lot of BS about politics and assume healthcare that way. There's a billion people that are still malnutrition. And it's what vaccine companies and everything do to you saying, look at all these people suffering from all these diseases. They need vaccines. They still get them and they still die of it. They do because they're malnourished. Vitamin A, and I'll put the link, I have the website where they show you right in Massachusetts Health. If you get measles, vitamin A. And actually they showed that infant mortality dropped significantly. It blew them away just by, once they got measles, giving them vitamin A. So there we got it. But imagine that you had sufficient vitamin A. You can now, your body can adapt to it and do wonderful with it, okay? What you got, Nancy? All right, last one, what about rosacea? Oh, rosacea is just a simple redness, especially it happens here a lot, okay? Um, there's, a, there's a doc that I know that every time I watch his videos, I want to adjust him because his head tilts and he's got rosacea on his cheeks, okay? <laughs> and he does a ton of videos on health. Uh, but yes, I'm like, I'm like, man, I even told him, I said, man, I want to test your food allergies, okay? Because that vascular change there is actually huge. Um, so most people that suffer from rosacea should have a food allergy. You want to take more? Sure, let's okay. go. We got 500 <laughs> people live right now. Does your beautiful wife use the same oils on her skin as you? No, no. Um, now, do we have some similar ones? Yes, it happens. But uh, um, we use a little. No, do we do? Well, I, I use a little more avocado oil with her. Um, it does really well with her body. And believe it or not, she couldn't use coconut for a while because she was allergic to it. You know, Sam. So I had to use other things with her. But uh, yes, but I said, so are some similarities what you can do? Yes, but uh, we don't use the exact same things. She's different than me. How many milligrams of vitamin A should a person be taking daily? Um, won't tell you unless I see a test because I have no clue. What about here, age? Here's what I want you to do though. If you eat, you know, roughly three ounces of liver a couple times a week, you'll have sufficient. Are canker sores inside the mouth also caused by allergies like other skin issues? Um, canker sores are mainly actually a deficiency in your immune system and actually you'll have hepatitis rear its ugly head just like shingles or any virus once your body is stressed out. So can it affect your skin being vitamin A deficient? But I'm more concerned about your, your immune deficiencies that are there. Can ingesting too much vitamin A cause skin issues, like maybe dry skin? Yes, it can. It can. And you got to be careful. See, here's what happens. Because a lot of people don't do this. A lot of people are going to go out and, and, uh, and buy a ton of vitamin A supplements. Please don't do that, okay? Uh, that's, not, but that's why I gave you foods, because your body can actually process that. You remember, fat soluble. If you don't have a gallbladder, you be, better be very careful about... Um, about eating a lot of fats. You, know, you gotta really make sure that things are working good. That's why you needed guidance. You know, I've always told you guys this, and Durham, I got so much criticism from doctors when I said this. See, doctors want to be a, an authority in a person's life. I don't. I wanna be a tour guide. I wanna be a tour guide. I wanna take you on an adventure that no one else has ever taken you on. 
Do you understand? That's what I want to do. And so you need good guidance. That's why we put all this stuff out there. But the number one thing I think I have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, you need to get tested on a regular basis to know what your body needs and, and cannot have. Um, can, can you have CBD if you're allergic to hemp? You cannot have CBD if you're allergic to hemp. You cannot. Okay. Then, yeah. So then go to marijuana. <laughs> All right. True? Uh, I just found out we were kind of researching the laws a little bit yesterday. Ten, uh, Tennessee, actually, they actually, 2015, they actually made marijuana more illegal because everybody was making it illegal. Yep. All right, I don't see any other ones. Excellent. Guys. Oh, wait, one more. Oh, one more. What do you got? Let me see. Are the flavored fish oils okay? Are the flavored fish oils okay? Yes, they does are. does processing Especially it, it good destroy? Quality. Good okay. companies will use good ingredients. I just like Nordic Naturals. Once again, let me say this. I don't have a tie to them. Go buy it from any local health food store. Um, I always tell people, support good manufacturers. Do you know why you support them? Because they'll keep making good products. Okay? So support them. Buy them. I'm, I took mine. Do you understand? So, yep. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We had over 500 people live today, which, for example, thank you. I appreciate that. Please do me a favor. Comment, like, and share. And um, let's put this idea in people's head all over the world. Remember, my name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Stop listening and start learning. God bless. See you guys later. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Also, share this video with a friend. Once again, thank you for watching.